Are you struggling to find clients as a freelancer? Of course you are. That's why you've clicked on this video. Don't worry though, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you the fundamentals of marketing yourself and your services to potential clients. Because I believe that I've pretty much perfected my client marketing strategy. Let's get to it. Let me just start off by saying direct sales does not work. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because it's such a common mistake that new freelancers make. They think that they can just walk up to a client and say, hey, I can build an app for you. And the client will respond with, okay, here's some money for you. It just doesn't work like that. So if you want to be successful as a freelance developer, in fact, if you want to be successful as any kind of freelancer, you need to be strategic with your marketing. Let's get into it. When you're talking about marketing strategy as a freelancer, you're more often than not also talking about personal branding. For me, personal branding is the most important part of my marketing strategy. Because if you have a strong personal brand, you can establish yourself as an expert in your field. And this is extremely important if the types of projects that you work on are projects that you can't talk about or can't include in your portfolio. For most of my projects, I am under a non-disclosure agreement, which means that I can't talk about the work that I've done and I certainly can't publish it, which is frustrating, but that's life. One of the reasons why I think that my personal brand and marketing strategy is so strong is because I don't just rely on one marketing channel. For those who don't know, a marketing channel is essentially a medium or method of marketing. So TV, radio, newspaper, well, those are the traditional ones anyway. Most marketing channels nowadays are social media platforms, such as TikTok or Instagram. And that's also the case for my marketing strategy. However, I don't like to group them all together because each one of them plays a different role. This is actually one of the mistakes that many marketeers make on a regular basis. They treat every social media platform like it's the same. And in reality, they're completely different. The content that you consume on Instagram and TikTok is vastly different from the content that you put out on Twitter, which is vastly different from the content that you put out on LinkedIn. The different social media platforms that I use are Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, X, YouTube, Threads, does that count? And my general consensus across all of these channels is that I am posting content that targets developers. Now you may be thinking, Tom, you're a freelance developer. Why are you targeting developers? Surely you should be targeting clients. Well, it's like I said, I'm establishing myself as an expert in my field. So from a client's point of view, if other people who are learning to code are trusting me as a source of information, I must be a good developer. Now, social media is a great tool. In fact, it's a fantastic tool. But if that's your only method of creating an audience and reaching your customers, you're playing a very risky game. This is because you don't actually own the audience that you have on social media platforms. The social media platforms do. We've seen it in the past where social media platforms have made changes to their algorithms, which have resulted in creators being able to reach less people than they used to. And boom, just like that, you've lost your marketing channel. So that is why diversifying your social media platforms is important, but you should also be going a step further. You need to be building an audience that you own, something that you can control something that no one is ever going to take away from you. This could be a Telegram channel or a private forum that you own. For me, it's a newsletter and a blog combined into one. I use Substack for this, but there are so many tools out there that can do this for you. My next marketing channel is a pretty common one, but most people do it wrong, networking events. In my experience, it feels like there are two types of networking events, regimented meetings with agendas and presentations, and then just social events. I'm sure you can guess which one I prefer. I think the reason why so many people struggle with networking events is because they go to the wrong ones. If you live in a small village and you're going to the local business networking event, the likelihood is, is that no one there is going to be in the market for a software developer that's going to be charging them 50 to 100 pounds an hour. Sure, you might get lucky, but I doubt it. So if you can figure out which events your potential customers are going to be going to, or the friends of your potential customers, you're about to hit a gold mine. But there's one more thing. Now that you've figured out how to market yourself to potential clients, you still need to figure out how to actually close the deal. You can be great at getting those clients through the door, but if they don't buy anything, what's the point? In most cases, if you're a freelancer, you're going to be building custom projects. So you don't need to have a defined sales pitch, but you do still need to be able to communicate your knowledge and ability to the client to gain their trust. If they don't trust you, they definitely won't hire you. You don't need to be deceiving, you don't need to lie, just make sure you know what you're talking about. And if they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, just be honest. And from there, the sales process is easy. Well, my friends, that's it for today's video. 
I hope you did enjoy and find it useful. If you did, please do leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.